Hey guys, Sarcaster here, and welcome back to another Rome 2 online battle. In this battle, my friend and I are going to be playing on one team, and then we have two Randys on the other. I am playing Rome. Oh, I played Rome. Uh, the names aren't there. I'm not sure why. It is an auto replay. It was such a good battle that I just forgot to save it. My friend, who is THX Canada, is playing the Suebe Forces. And then my two opponents. Let's see. I know one of them is over here. I think Petrod was one of them. Was a was playing the Seleucids, and then the other guy, the Averni guy, dropped out right before the battle ended, so he's not in the previous thing. But I think his name was Butterman or something like that. All right, let's get on with this. Uh, let's get on with this battle. Oh wait, 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 wait! We gotta go through forces. Okay, my friend. We'll start with him. His army consists of his cavalry, which are riders of the hunt. And when we come to his main frontline infantry, he brings uh, four units of wood and add spears. And then his general unit is a sword master, and he brings four more units of berserkers. Okay, and then his ranged unit are longbow hunters, and they do a great job this game. Uh, the last game we just played, which was the one right before this one, we were playing a character, uh, a person called Patchy and Chris. And I was playing this webe. I'd never played this webe before, and I just did not know how to play them. And I went up against the Averni, uh, an Averni character, and he just absolutely wrecked me in the face. And uh, that was Patchy, so I'm hoping that's not some uh, famous YouTuber that sounds familiar with. But, uh, you know, if it shows up, then it's there. Uh, I'd be playing the Rome Force out in a... I wasn't playing Rome, I was playing the Suebe. And it was out on a very hilly terrain. Uh, with a lot of trees, and there was a road in the middle. Almost like an ambush battle, but it was an ambush battle. Uh, just the road in the middle split the two maps apart. So, um... If that ends up coming up anywhere, I hope you guys enjoy. I, I got my butt handed to me, but my friend THX Canada actually held out on his own. Uh, props to him, because normally I'm the one that's beating him in games. But anyways, let's get on with this. Oh, wait, I didn't even done my forces yet. All right, when I come to my frontline infantry, I bring four units of Praetorian Guards. I went for quality over quantity. Uh, I brought two units of Tree REI. And then I brought three units of Syrian archers. Um, normally I don't go for the archer unit because they're a little overpriced, but Syrian archers are a good unit because they will la they will they will survive a charge pretty pretty well. And they will, they they when they run out of ammo, they're not one hundred percent useless. You can use them to fight. They can fight a little bit, and that's why that's what makes them valuable. Is they in the in the end of the game when they have no ammo left, they are worth at least something. So that's why I use them. They are a little expensive, but I, I decided to go for it. And they have the precision shot ability, which is great. And I went with the gladiator trices, the female gladiators. They are amazing units. Their melee attack is almost up there with the Praetorian Guards, but they have no armor. Uh, so you keep them in reserve. I keep them in reserve for uh, flanking and other battles that my opponent ha has low units or wavering units on. So the gladiators can just get in there, wreck their face, and get out. Because they, in prolonged battle, they will not win. And then back to my cavalry. I have a legatus for my general, because it's the cheaper general unit. And then I brought the two units of Sosui Equites Extraordinary. Okay, now going over to my opponents. I am lagging a little bit. I'm sorry about that. That normally does not happen. Okay, the battle was uh, a no artillery battle. Artillery people will tend to. In artillery battles, people will tend to turtle up and not press the advantage. Or press forward. And so I, I normally don't do artillery battles. I might do a few here and there. But uh, I don't limit anything else. So as you can see. Uh, the Seleucids brought a very frustrating enemy unit. Unless you have something to take care of it with. And that is the Indian War Elephants. Going to his front line. Well going to his range units. He brought, brings three Persian Light Archers. I think. Yes three. And they actually are very very good. Uh, they surprised me this game. They did a really good job cleaning up a lot of a lot of my men, doing a lot of 
uh, damage, and they have a lot of ammo, just like the uh, Syrian archers. But the thing is, they're, they're probably about the same, but the thing is, when these archers get in a fight, they will not last as long as the Syrian archers do, but they are probably cheaper. Okay, now coming to the hillmen, he brought some hillmen for his front line. Or nothing but hillmen. Okay, his, his, his front line consists of six hillmen. Those are axe units, right? Yeah, those are axe units. And then he brought two units of thrower spheres. Okay, coming over to his cavalry. He has three camel units. One camel spearman, camel archers, and two units of camel archers, and one azot knight horse unit. Uh, what's worrisome is he made a genius position to bring camel units because horses do not fare well normally against camel units unless they're shock, shock cavalry which I luckily brought but they don't last in prolonged battle because horses uh, I think it's the horse, horse units are scared of camels something like that it messes with their morale messes with the, their, their results when it comes to fighting uh, camel units are really good if you want to uh, send them in against horses uh, but they are slower. That's that's one issue with the Campbells. Okay, coming into uh, another infantry unit that he has in reserve, apparently. He brings a Royal Peltast unit, and I actually did not see that one in battle. Uh, his general is a Hellenic Cataphrac and another Royal Peltast, and then you, we have the frustrating unit, unit of the Elephants. Coming over to the Averni, which absolutely wrecked me last game. It is a different guy. Because uh, the guy that wrecked me last game was his name was Patchy, and it was on a really really unfair terrain. Actually, they had the hill, and I I, I pressed the I pressed up the hill when I shouldn't. I should have wait, made them come down, but uh, you know shit happens. Okay, his front line consists of naked warriors, uh, which I prefer personally do not prefer naked warriors. They do have fair uh, combat abilities, but they have no armor. And you can easily take them easily take them out with ranged units. They are very, very vulnerable to ranged units. But they're normally meant to soak up fire. I think he brought too many of them. Uh, he probably should have brought like maybe three or two, and then the rest being a, a unit with some armor. And then he has a unit of o Oathsworn, two units of Oathsworn, three units of Oathsworn, and uh, his generals an Oathsworn. And then my friend THX112, you guys, you can see he's playing Battlefield, so he's not something I just made up. <laughs> Alright, and his cavalry consists of heavy horses. And that's it. Uh, one thing I do have to say is that the Seleucids definitely went for a more quantity army. He wanted to get his 20 stack, uh, which could have paid off for him, if had he played right. Uh, he can, it could still pay off for him. He does perform very well this battle. And uh, definitely the Averni went way into quality. And with that little bit of money he had left, he, he bought some cheap units. So let's see how this battle plays out, guys. Now, as the battle starts, I notice that the Seleucids are on the are far left. And I'm like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to move my army and put myself to, uh, parallel with them to make sure that he has no flanking potential. Uh, my friend, however... He's wanting to do that. He doesn't. He doesn't want to conform with me somewhat. And I, I keep telling him, like, dude, if they could pick us off one by one, if we don't somewhat stick together. And he's like, fine. And he gets over here. He comes. He reforms over here, close closer to me eventually. Yeah, but I, I put my men in lock formation because I like the formation I had them up in. And I set them up parallel with the Seleucids. Let's see if we get some good movement shots. As you wish. Okay, let's see what the Seleucids are up to, since he's my main competitor. He, he notices me performing a parallel with him, and he doesn't make any moves. He just gets his army together and waits for me. He presses forward a little bit. Uh, just to put his archers in range. Oh, here we go. Archer fire, maybe? No, not yet. I'm not close enough yet. All right, my friend over here, he's a little bit closer. Uh, close enough to where we could support each other. Uh, the Averni, the guy playing the Averni faction, 
uh, is kind of done the same thing. He's not too far away from his friend, uh, his ally, but not uh, too close. And normally it's better to be close and further away, but it is what it is. My battle setup is to protect myself from enemy cavalry. And as I notice he forms his cavalry up on the left side, I begin to move my archers over there to take out his cavalry because they are low armor camels. And uh, I bring up a spear unit over just in case they decide to try to charge. Uh, I'm a little worried with the camel units because they, they, even though my horses are good, he could perform some heavy casualties or even pull through my horse unit. So I do have to bring a Triarii unit over. And I actually end up bringing the other Triarii unit over. Uh, he, he's trying to get me to make a mistake. And I'm just not letting it happen. I'm letting him do his thing. I'm letting him form around me. He gets his men ready. He starts shooting at my Praetorian Guard. And I start taking casualties pretty heavily. And uh, as I notice this... Well, I'm not taking heavy casualties, but they do start taking ha casualties. So I notice this. I don't notice it yet, but I will. They do seem to take, be taking casualties, though. And there, I noticed that they were being shot at and taking casualties. So I moved them into attacking Sestudo formation to... Uh, so they won't take any casualties and i know it's a bit now i'm really open and he could actually press forward and try to get an advantage on me but in attacking testudo formation he's not going to get any kills or maybe one maybe a few but not very many with this archer so i render his archers useless when it comes to attacking my mainline infantry he continues to press forward a little bit i just initiated a charge using my spearman hopefully he would hoping he would notice uh, my archers have gotten some camel kills. Uh, we're just skirmishing. Uh, as I'm on this side, my my ally and Averni have prepared to engage. Uh, apparently, they're not up for the, the skirmishing battle, uh, and they just don't want to do it. My ally has already flanked the opponent, and as you can see, the naked warriors have stand no chance. They take so many casualties. Just so many casualties from the javelins that his swordsmen throw, and they instantly start to rout. And it's just an absolute massacre. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful massacre. His, uh, he has engaged his cavalry. And his cavalry win very well he has the enemy alberni has engaged both his cavalry into one unit which would have been uh it would have been better if he had used one unit to engage in that cavalry riders in the hunt and then his other unit to help out his infantry but he doesn't do that uh, i'm guessing my friend tied him up tied him up like that on purpose and with hurt cavalry my friend decides to use them to kind of mess up the formation of the oath sworn unit so he can press his men forward after they're done fighting another good thing is that the enemy of Verney uses his archers and wastes their ammo on his nearly dead cavalry unit. He does have spears, so he, he believe, I guess he believed he could afford such a uh, cost. Anyways, the the Averni presses one of his oaths one forward. I, I really don't know what's going on over here. I'm trying to go as I go. But, uh, he moved one unit forward. He's already uh, kind of losing the fight. Very difficult for him. But he will pull out. My friend ends up starting to lose. Well, it's pretty even. I don't know. It's pretty even with the horses right now. But I do believe that my friend's horse... Uh, Berserk... Not Berserk. Oh, Berserkers are in there. I didn't even see that. Uh, Riders of the Hunt do eventually come out victorious. Anyways, moving back to our side. Um, I'm still in formation. The enemy archers have started firing upon my uh, Syrian archers, which is a, de a smart decision by his archers. And I, I took heavy casualties. Uh, I ended up losing one unit. 
ended up using one unit of archers, and it really sucked. And I'm like, I just can't skirm out skirmish him. He has way more uh, units than I do. But I do end up uh, managing to get rid of one of his. So now it's two archers and two archers. And as his cavalry approach to bait me out again, I do rush a spear unit forward just to push them back a little bit. I do take some casualties from the skirmish, uh, the skirmisher horses. Oh, not, not skirmisher horses, but the Thura spears wasting their javelins on my cheap spear unit. And he notices that I have my put my archers in reserve, but they're actually away from my spear units, and that worries me. So I'm forced to send my send my general in to try to intercept his horses. And currently, I have my horses positioned over there in case my uh, ally needs my help. But uh, that was a bad decision by me, and I should have had them where they needed to be. But my general t uh, su manages to successfully tie up uh, the enemy, both of my enemies. Uh, cav units, and I do end up taking out his camel spearman unit. But uh, regardless of his casualties, he forces one of the, his horse unit to through my uh, general and through the spears to manage to clip some of my Syrian archers. And I just have a hard time stopping him. At this point, I've I've noticed that I'm struggling uh, protecting my my archers, and I send my two horse units over to try to stop him. But he is just out skirmishing me. And I've taken my units, my Praetorians, out of Tetsudo formation because his archers are pretty much out of ammo by now. And I figured they'd be safe, so I'm, I'm protected from a charge at this point. I used my other Triarii unit just to soak up spears and stuff like that. It's a cheap unit. Uh, they'd be good against horses, but I just, I'd rather protect my Praetorian guard and my, other, my gladiators than my spear unit because they're not that great in melee. Uh, well, they're fine, but I, I use them for horse. Uh, against horses to protect my sides. And I don't really need to use them for battle. So he wasted all his javelins on my spear unit. I ended up putting them in square formation to kind of cover my side. Uh, my enemy is all out of ammo. He has no more skirmishing potential other than his horses. And he, he starts to press forward. I, I notice this and I start to press my Praetorian guards forward a little bit. But then I realize that they had uh, javelins. They could throw javelins themselves. So I keep them where they're at. I'm uh, constantly worried about being outflanked, and I'm just trying to keep some men away, but also close, so they don't come in and take out my archers, what's left of them. Moving back to my ally, he has cleaned up the Averni pretty well. They're on his general right now. He has his, one of his last skirmish, his two last skirmisher units firing in on the back of my allies' wooden ass spears, another cheap unit. Uh, that could take the casualty. Losing the wooden ass spears wouldn't be too costly. He, he begins to lose the that battle, but his general does take heavy, ca heavy casualties. And my, my teammate does have a lot of men left over to fight off the rest of the Averni forces. It is a very close battle, but I do believe that my friend has won. Now I noticed that he's finally starting to use his elephants and I'm really worried uh, about the result of that. I, he sends his last Hellenic, his general unit Hellenic cataphracts in and I just have a very difficult time stopping them. I send my general in to try to tie them up a little bit and that was a bad decision because the Hellenic cataphracts, heavily armored, very, very good at melee and my general is Legatus is not that good. I shouldn't have sent them in. I should have kept them in reserve. But you know I, I had to do what I had to do. I try to trying to keep his elephants off of my army, because you know how devastating they can be. I have to send in my my two horse units just to tie them up and make sure they don't do anything. My horse units begin to suffer heavy casualties and they begin to rout. But uh, I managed to tie the elephants up so I could take care of his general unit. And I end up losing that fight with this general unit. At this point, we have engaged. I have engaged my Praetorian Guard. He has engaged his. And they're doing the best they can to fight off their units. Oh my god. Okay, we're going to slow mode here. Slow mode. Because I just can't keep up with what's going on. Here we go. Here we go.
Oh, that's, that's brutal. Decapitation. Alright, moving over here to uh, the main battle line, which is really messed up, but it is what it is. My Praetorian Guard have been fighting them off. So with this unit soloed around, I've actually brought my gladiators around to flank, and we're going to see some of the carnage that my gladiator brings out of it. His general ultimately wins that fight, uh, killing not killing my general, but routing him. Uh, so my men's morale is lowered by the miss by, my, by the loss of my general unit routing. And he manages to charge them into the back of my Praetorian Guard. Lucky Praetorian Guard have very high morale, and they just get back up and continue to fight. But they have suffered heavy, heavy casualties. They just keep fighting on. Moving back over to the flank. You notice that the gladiators are just doing insane damage to the rear of the Seleucid forces. And they are just dying off extremely fast. You could almost say females OP, to be honest. All right, back to this little skirmish right here. I have routed the hillmen, and the starting to route the human hillmen. Oh, they have routed as of now, and uh, I'm cleaning them up. Gladiators are very, very, very good when it comes to uh, rear charging. And after losing, taking heavy casualties from my from the, his horses. Well, not heavy, but, I mean, it's still pretty devastating. Uh, I didn't kill a single one of the elephants, but my goal was just to tie them up for a little bit. Uh, I know if I sent anything else in there, they would have just died really fast. I was forced to send my uh, very heavy shock cav into the elephants, and I do so. I, I think I do it again, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I just have to keep them out of my infantry, and that was my entire goal. Just bait them out, keep them out of my infantry, keep his general out of my infantry. And just to skirmish with him. I did what I had to. As you can see, he just run. The elephant just runs over, runs over the horse, and they just fall over dead. It's it's absolutely devastating. I managed to get a charge off on his general, which is pretty devastating. Tying them up, allowing my. Okay, I don't do that. I tie them up, and he manages to get the elephants a charge in on the cavalry. But I have done what I wanted. I have tied both the elephant and the general unit up, uh, keeping them out of my infantry and managing to bring some spear units over to uh, support my cavalry unit. I have my other cavalry unit kind of in reserve, just doing what they needed. I noticed that the uh, his camel archers are out of ammo, so I send them. I try to send them in to take out the camel archers. At this point, I had to bring my other cavalry unit out of the fight because they were taking two heavy casualties but I have basically routed nearly his entire army of infantry, uh, leaving my uh, my army in good shape. The Praetorian Guards are taking some, cab, some archer fire from the rear, which is pretty devastating, but they are heavily armored, so they don't take as many casualties as uh, a regular one, you know, would. And I'm just so scatterbrained at this point in the game. I I, haven't, I didn't notice, and it took me a while to react to to that. Uh, my friend begins to come over here and assist me, but I ask him not to, uh, just in case. Let's keep his units in reserve. We don't want to get our units tied together in the same mess. So the enemy sends his camel archers into the rear of one of my uh, of my Praetorian guard, and that gives me the chance to. Uh, charge in my other horse unit and catch them out and route them. Uh, but his general countercharges and begins to break my horse unit. Uh, that also gives me a chance to tie down to send in my spear unit. Uh, now the elephants are finally coming into fight. But as I'm charging my other minute, I don't. I'm not sure what he does with them. <laughs> he doesn't use them very well. I begin my whole mass of units begin to route right there and I I just keep trying to tie his elephants up and keep them from doing damage to my infantry so I charge my horse unit and again I've lost that horse unit they're routing 
my last horse unit begins to rout. I have nothing but infantry left. Uh, but his general is waver uh, not wavering, but he is in the yellow. And I'm just slowly deteriorating them down, working on them. He charges them in once again, but I take advantage of my Triarii, and I get a couple more kills off of them. Which ultimately ends in them routing, I believe. But there's nothing I can do. He has his, uh, has his elephants in there, and he doesn't pull them through, but the elephants are just going to tear through my Triarii, and I just have a very difficult time. The Triarii end up routing, but I, at the I take the advantage of them being tied up to reinforce and get together all my men again. So since I have no range units left, I am very confident that I cannot route his elephant unit. My friend so happens to have one archer unit left, and I ask him to use flaming rounds on the elephants trying to save my Triaria unit. But that just does not, it doesn't work. It does work because it puts the elephants out of control, but it does not save my Triaria unit. So now that they're out of the, the elephants are out of the picture and they're out of control and we keep them out of control, there's only two units left of the Seleucids uh, that keep between, between us and victory. And taking out these two units is very, fat, uh, is very, very simple for us. He has a Persian army, a Persian light archers remaining in that fight. And we never noticed, or I never noticed that my, where is it? There were a camel unit over here somewhere. I guess he already sent them in. Did he? In service to Rome. There's a camel unit. There they are. Camel unit in remaining. And that's his last unit other than his elephants. And we're just trying to keep his elephants just away from us, away from our infantry. Uh, they're pretty devastating if you can use them correctly. And we just don't want to fight the elephants. As we're preparing to fight the elephants, though, because we felt like we are going to have to be forced to fight them, I see his remaining ca uh, camel unit, and I use my horses to charge to get that. Uh... Yep, it's pretty brutal. Heavy casualties on both sides. It's pretty heavy. And, in fact, the camels end up routing pretty quickly. And since the elephants are the last unit left, and they're, they're being put out of control, I think one more fire volley comes in lights them up, and that's it, that they route, and that's game. Uh, my army ends up getting uh, 1,985 kills, which was uh, higher than what I suspected it to be, but uh, my Praetorian Guards performed quite well. But starting with the Legatus, I, I used them only when I had to. A general unit, you know, you normally want to keep it safe, but you got to do what you got to do. They ended up getting 24 kills. The My cavalry, over all in all, getting around uh, 140 combined my archers perform very well for that unit at least getting 107 kills so they they ended up being pretty cost effective uh, very well cost effective but these two units did not perform as well as i wanted them to my gladiators which in the end were still in great shape uh did exactly what i wanted wanted them to do they went in there flanked some units and just got a bunch of kills and for, for their price, they did a great job getting around 75 and 60 there. And my Praetorian Guards out, way outperformed expectations. Uh, this unit getting almost uh, 450 kills, 360, 230, 300. One, uh, and then the Triarii did their job with uh, around 100, uh, almost 200 in total. Yeah, they, did, they just outperformed. This was a great army setup. I loved the Seleucid player was very good too. He did a very great job fighting me. Uh but when it, in the end uh he couldn't skirmish as long as I did. Uh even though he had more cav, my cav was better and I had spear units to counter his cav and I I just kept myself protected, kept the units in reserve and put units where they needed to be and I just really watched out for what he was doing. Uh when it came to his hillmen, his hillmen were a good a good choice to bring them, but I wouldn't have put them up front. I would have put the uh, the Thorough Spears up front to take the initial impact of the Praetorian Guard, uh, along with the Royal Peltast, and would have used the Hillman as a, like more of a flanking unit or soaking up a uh, Archer Fire unit, uh, because they're very cheap, and they're they're not really meant to fight head-on, uh, especially since they're an Axe unit. Axe units are meant uh, to basically do what the Gladiators do. And uh, they got tore through. I mean... One of them did fairly decent for their price, uh, getting 43 kills. Uh, well, their archers performed fairly decent, almost the same as mine, a little bit worse. For their price, they performed pretty well.
uh, getting around 160 kills in total. Uh, coming to their camel archers, the camel archers perform very well, at least one this unit, getting 100 kills, and then these two uh, getting shot down. Oh, this unit doing fairly decent, but I think I routed them pretty early. Uh, and the camel spearmen, I think I routed them pretty early too. Uh, his general did performed very, very well. Uh, he used his general very effectively throughout the fight, and he, he had some really good charges, but just his general alone wasn't enough to pull the fight in his favor. Uh, his elephants could have pulled the fight in his favor, but we just handled them properly, and had we not have that archer unit, it would have been very difficult. We could have taken several more casualties than we did. Uh, he also could have committed them early earlier in the fight, and that would have definitely worried me. But uh, he waited till the end, where they were one of the last units left, and his men were routing pretty quickly. Moving to my teammate. His men performed very well, his general getting around 200 kills. Uh, his riders of the hunt getting a total of 120, somewhere around there. His longbow hunters performed an excellent job killing, I'm guessing, he killing the naked warriors since they have low armor, and massacring through them. His Berserkers did very, very well, uh, and his Wooden Ass Spears did very well. Uh, the Averni, he had the right setup. He had the right idea, but I think he went too quality, too much into quality. And then to, with the very little bit of money he had left, he went for Naked Warriors. Naked Warriors, in my opinion, are not that great, especially when you have units that, when you're facing off against an opponent that has units that throw spears and stuff. Uh, if if you are forced in that situation, I would have put my Earth Sworn up first and uh, let them take the initial impact and then use my Naked Warriors as a flanking unit, kind of like with the Hillmen and the Gladiators. Uh, that's just how he had to have it. Uh, he used his horses pretty pretty well, uh, getting killing, his, uh, killing my allies' horses, uh, but they just could not hold up. They kept getting tied down and... Uh, his Warden has spears and ended up finishing them off, I believe. And that was the end of that. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment. And uh, if you want to see more content, subscribe so you know when it's released. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do one online battle daily since it's got such a positive feedback already going on. And um, I'm going to keep up with it. Once again, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.